with that being said, if you were Mark Harlan, what are you doing about the basketball program? You know, um, Utah basketball seven and seven currently. You know, we're at least five hundred. That's all I can say right now because there's well, been overall. times where I, overall, yeah, we're f- at least we're above five hundred because there's been times where I've been like, we're a sub five hundred team, and you know, but again, there are some losses that should have been wins, and there are some wins that should have been losses. So maybe it should even out. Like we shouldn't have lost to Cal, we shouldn't have lost to UW, but we shouldn't have beat State, and we shouldn't have beat Colorado yesterday. So mm-hmm. it kind of evens out in my eyes. But if I'm Mark Harlan, okay, at this point, because of COVID, it is too hard to buy him out of his contract because his buyout is steep. It is so high. But I think no matter how this season ends, Harlan needs to sit down with him and be like, shape up or you're out of here because Utah fans are getting upset and Utah fans are getting frustrated and Utah fans are dreading basketball. The fact that Athletic Director Harlan is doing a podcast, doing his podcast tomorrow and you, it says drop questions down below for the Harlan podcast and you scroll through the thread and 95% of the, qu- the comments are, when, when are you going to fire Larry? What's going on with basketball? Why aren't you firing Larry? Why aren't you firing Larry? It's just, if, if people are fed up, you know? You hold your football program, you hold your gymnastics program, you hold all these other programs to high, high, high standards, but yet you're letting your basketball team fall below. I just, I don't know. But I'm also, if I'm Harlan, I'm already scouting out potential like replacements because I think he's safe for this year. If he's fired this year, that is uh, a very surprising move by the athletic department. But next year, that might be his last year. Because there's no, uh, there's, you can't use COVID as an excuse to like not fire him because you don't have the funds. Like, yes, revenue is still going to be down, but you're still going to have more revenue coming in now there then than you did have, you have coming in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unacceptable, you know. Over the last so over the last three years, Larry and the Utes are forty and thirty six overall, and twenty two and twenty four in conference. He hasn't made the NCAA tournament since twenty sixteen. To me, that is a, potentially the biggest issue. This um, next to the record, um, you're a, you're you're in a Power Five conference, a conference that's known pretty well for having decent basketball. I mean. You know, you've got UCLA, Oregon's been fantastic over the last couple USC. of years, maybe the last decade. USC has had its, you know, its heyday at times. And then Utah, historically, Utah's been a pretty good, not not elite, but a pretty good basketball program, especially, you know, in the 80s and 90s. The Utah majority. basketball. Yeah, Utah basketball was, was, was one of the better programs in the West, I'd say. Um but you haven't made that tournament in five years. And that to me is a kicker that to me, if it wasn't for COVID, you know, I think any other power five, five school, if their program wasn't making the tournament you would have been gone over a while five ago. years. Absolutely. Absolutely. He would have been gone a while ago. And, and especially with you, you know, over the last three seasons, you're barely over 500 overall. And you have to put into perspective that quite a few of those victories are are coming from the beginning of the season, where you play garbage teams, where you play Idaho State. Where when you they play... beat Mississippi Valley State last year by like 90-something points. What was that? Just... What... <laughs> right. and that, uh, But it's reflected in his conference in his conference uh, record, 22 and 24. You're two games below... 500 in in the conference and so the the clock i think the clock has technically expired for larry um but his saving grace is that massive contract and the athletic program you know losing millions this year because of covid you know it's and it's unfortunate that it turns out that way right i mean there's a lot of people that lost their jobs because of um you know money and and losing out on on ticket sales and stuff like that. But it's just unfortunate that Larry is probably keeping his job because of that. Um, So my take is if you can find a way to cut ties now, if you can find some new coach that's, that's willing to 
that maybe, that maybe doesn't have a ton of experience and can't demand a major salary. Maybe you take the chance on that and see what that, you know, that guy can do with the program. Um, Cause Larry just needs to be done. Done. His time has run its course. He's losing games. He's losing talent. We've had way too many players transfer out of the program. And I, I worry that you might lose more, you know, who's to say yeah. that you know, I, I personally, I don't think that Timmy Allen is ready for the NBA quite yet. But he still, and with the COVID freeze, he still has technically two years of eligibility. Who's to say that he doesn't transfer somewhere else? You know, who's to say that? I, I think there's plenty of programs that would welcome Timmy Allen. I don't think it's a situation Look at where. Blue Hot. Exactly, exactly. And so I think he would find a home pretty quickly, and he might. I would not be surprised if Utah doesn't get above 500 this year and just continues to bleed. If we saw him put his name in the transfer portal this this upcoming off season, and so that's a hot take. It's just at some point, it, it's it's just too much, you know. And while there are certain benefits to being a star player on a team like this, you there's also downsides too. yeah, there's there is downsides because you what. While, yes, the offensive load is often put on his back and it's impressive that he can do the things that, that he is, if I was a player, I'd rather be winning, A, and B, I'd rather be developing in a better situation where I have teammates that can play like me surrounding me so that I can become a better teammate rather than, okay, everything's on me, I have to churn these out and we're still losing. And he's not even necessarily putting – it's not like Timmy Allen's putting up 25 and 10 a game, you know. He's putting up like 16.8 and like I think a little over five assists maybe. I think it's between four and five. And so I just think I, – I, I just think that Larry's day is should be done. If, if you wanted my honest opinion, I don't think it's going to happen this year just because of the buyout. Yeah. But next year, it's got to be done and over. Um and, and, and what I would tell him is I'd say, look, if you can't get above 500 this season. Yeah, consistently. Like if you can't get above 500 this year and you're not pushing, you know, quite a bit over 500 next season, you're done. Yeah. And I like, I like how you brought up a coach that you think would be not be as, as demanding with contracts. Um, I think – a name that like I personally would like to see in that running for the Utah basketball job when it becomes open, because it's not a matter of if now it's a matter of when um, is Craig Smith of Utah state. Mm -hmm. Look at what he's done with that program. He's turned it around. They went to the tournament last, they were almost in the tournament last year and they had some play. Sam well, they, Bird, won the, they won the, they won the mountain West. Yeah. yeah. They won the mountain West and they would have made it to the tournament if it wouldn't have been canceled. So if you bring in someone like Craig Smith, who knows the state of Utah already as it is, and you give him the tools to be, play at a uh, like a P5 and coach at a P5 school, I think that that's fine. I think that's good because you're not going to be able to get someone from another P5 school because that's going to require lots and lots of money on buyouts. And that's yeah. if you're already paying a large buyout for Larry, why are you going to want to pay a large buyout for your next head coach? Because then you're just putting yourself into an even bigger hole. So well, and I hope. I hope that Harlan's also learned why are we paying our basketball coach so much money? I, and that wasn't Harlan's job. Not. That wasn't on Harlan. That was on Dr. Chris Hill because that was the, one of the last contracts he dealt with, if I remember correctly, before he stepped down as athletic director. Yeah, so I, I hope Harlan's learned the lesson from that. Do and not pay someone that much money. It, we're not We're not Candace. We're not Duke. We're not UNC. We're not... We're not one of those programs that's, you know, consistently a contender for the national championship. It's like we haven't even made the tournament in five years and we couldn't even win the NIT when we were in that tournament. Yeah, I think. And, you know, you can't say that Harlan's not doing stuff because it, you're seeing stuff like this take over in other programs at Utah. Right. Utah baseball, for example, last year, right before the season started, the baseball team announced that they had hired an assistant or a, a, an assistant head coach or a grad or like someone who's an, who's a helping Killenberg, the head coach baseball, which he is also on the hot seat. And I told one of my colleagues, 
doesn't finish to be fired because Utah has won a Pac-12 championship in baseball. But they, if I, I'm not, I, I think they made it to the College World Series, but I think they lost in the first round. And the coach that they brought in took Texas A&M to like back-to-back College World Series in like his first and second year. So if you already have installed someone like that into your program for baseball, that's writing on the wall that you're not going to be there. So Harlan is doing his part for some of his teams, but I think that Utah basketball is the one that's struggling because Andy Andy Hill is technically considered head coach in waiting, but I don't like that hire. I don't like that. Well, and one one issue that I have with um, with Larry K recently is I I don't I think. Utah should be getting the top recruits out of the state of Utah, but they're not. They're they're going to BYU. They're going to Utah State. They're not like I just you know I pick on all pick on him all the time. But Ryland Jones is not a, like I understand what he did in high school, but you have to understand that there's certain elevations required in talent, and he just hasn't proved that he has those. And and kind of the same deal with Brandon Carlson. I like the kid's hustle. I like his um tenacity but i just think there's better players out there in the state of utah than those two that utah brought in and we're just you're not getting them so if you're not if you're a power five and you're not dominating the recruiting in your own state something's wrong yeah look at utah football that's all i'm going to say is because we can we can we will dominate byu and utah state when it comes to recruiting in football yes we'll still lose kids out of state to like oregon or usc or something like that but we're beating the teams here for the local kids the class of 2020 or the class of 2019 is one of the biggest like bright spots of that you get van flinger you get xavier carlton you get all of these huge prospects from the state of utah to commit to utah over i think utah flipped that i think if you would have gone 15 20 years ago BYU was dominating that. Yeah. You know, but it's the P5. But then I think Utah, yeah, I think Utah's flipped the script and they are now taking, and you'll occasionally lose a kid here and there. And a lot of that has to do with the religious aspect that BYU offers. And, you know, a lot of these kids, LDS kids, want to go and play for BYU, but you should, they, and they are, Utah football is still getting most of the best players. And Utah basketball should be able to emulate that. They should, but they're not. And, you know, Hopefully, better and brighter days are ahead for Utah basketball because at this point, it's just kind of – it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch Utah basketball because you never know what team you're going to get. We've said it once, and I'll, we've said it many times. The one thing Utah basketball is consistent at is it's being inconsistent. Well, and, and my final word of the day is you're, the biggest issue that you can have as a fan, um, the, the, big, the worst mindset you can have is – when you expect your team to lose every game and you're not surprised, but then when they win, it is a surprise. That's just not – I don't like having that mindset, but that's that's where I'm at. Yesterday, huge surprise. Oh, yeah. I expected them, I expected them to lose from the tip. I remember your, like your, going that way. Your, tech, your text that I got from you during the game were like, oh, my God, they're actually going to do this. Like – we shouldn't be surprised when Utah basketball wins, but yet here we are. But then also, like, they lose games they're not supposed to lose either. And so that's, it's just... that's the mindset of, I feel like, a school like Weber State or a UVU, right? That, that maybe schedules BYU early in the season and somehow pulls off a victory, right? That's, that's a good surprise. That's like, or, you know, Utah and Alabama back in, back in the Sugar Bowl, you know? Mm-hmm. Underdog. Underdog. I don't mind the underdog, but I hate the, all right, well, here we go again. We should probably lose. Oh my gosh, we beat a team that's not even that good. I hate that. I hate it too. But sadly, that's all the time we have today for on you, Dash. As always, um, we want you to just check out our website, dashsports.tv. We have columns up there. We have our podcasts. We have videos. You can watch our show. You can watch Trojan Dash. You can watch Cougar Dash. You can watch Devil Dash. Any show about the Pac-12. Produced by us, you can find on our website. While you're also on your computer or your phone or whatever, make sure you follow us on social media at Dash Sports TV on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Also, while you're on your phone, follow Cole and I. Um, I'm at S underscore Mora 99. Cole is at, at Bagley underscore Cole. Um, we tweet fun stuff, you know? memes, athletic notes, 
Um, it's a good time. But that's that's all we have for today. Cole, as always, do you want to give him a nice go Utes? Go Utes, guys. <laughs>